Hey everyone, Liam here. The Madrid Open draw just came out, so let's go through my predictions. Before we get into the video, if you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us grow the tennis section community. I'm going to a lot of tournaments coming up, so there's going to be a lot of content coming from those tournaments such as Madrid, Rome, Wimbledon, the US Open. I'm trying for more tournaments as well, guys. So please subscribe to the channel. I'm also trying to achieve 1,000 subscribers, so it really help us grow the community. Already we've had some big names withdrawing from Madrid. You know, we've had the likes of Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, and Yannick Sinner withdrawing. So three top 10 players already out of the tournament. It's sad to see, you know, Nadal, we, we We've known for a little bit of time that it's, it was, you know, he's not been recovering as well as he would like to have, but the situation seems a little bit worse now. And we're hoping that we maybe see him in Rome at least before Roland Garros. Um, Novak Djokovic hasn't been playing well in Monte Carlo or even in Banja Luka. Seems obviously to be injury related, so he needs to take the time off and it's totally understandable. Yannick Sinner has just played so much tennis over the last few months. It takes a very big toll on you being... It's, it's sort of a blessing and a curse being as good as he is because he reaches the semi-finals or the finals of most tournaments this year like following the Australian Open and it's been very tough on him and you can't blame him for withdrawing here in Madrid taking the time to rest and recover be it his best for Rome and Roland Garros but looking at the draw here it seems to be very top heavy in Madrid so let's go through the top half first well in the top half we have four big names in the top 10 obviously we've got Alcraz, Kaspar Ruud, uh, Andrei Rublev and Holger Rune you know, the draw The draw seems to be quite heavy on this top half, of, as, as I've already mentioned. The thing is, it's most likely, you know, if you look at the, the top quarter of the, well, the, the, the top half of the top half, so the first quarter of the entire draw, you know, it's it seems to be more of a way for Carlos Alcaraz and Andre Rublev to meet in the quarterfinals. Don't see really too much going on for Alcaraz beforehand. Obviously, he will meet Dimitrov in the third round, Zverev in the fourth round, most likely. But, you know, Dimitrov isn't the Dimitrov of 2017 and Zverev isn't the Zverev of before his injury. I mean, Zverev lost to Christopher O'Connell in uh, in uh, in his home tournament in Munich. And, and, you know, he wasn't playing at all well, I would say. Unfortunately for him, it seems to be, you know, he, he started peaking, getting getting quite up, you know, into form and stuff like that. Even in Dubai, he played well. And then ever since he lost that match to Medvedev, just not really not really been playing too too well so I don't think he's going to be too much of an ass for Alcaraz then obviously Alcaraz would meet Andrei Rublev in the in the quarterfinals and that really seems to be the biggest opposition in the first quarter of the draw and then you know it would be either Holger Rune or Kasper Ruud in the court in the in the semi-finals and to be personally honest it's going to be more on the Holger Rune side of things rather than the Kasper Rude side of things just because Kasper Rude hasn't been playing well. So I think Alcaraz is a very clean sweep in his way at least to the semi-finals because obviously Andrew Rube hasn't been in great form but Carlos Alcaraz is in is even better form. You know, Andrew Rublev did win Monte Carlo and he reached the final obviously in uh, Banja Luka but he did lose the final to Dusan Lajovic. Carlos Alcaraz obviously didn't play Monte Carlo, came straight into Barcelona, won the entire tournament, defended his title without dropping an entire set. So he seems to be the man to beat at the moment and obviously is the highest left player in this draw after the withdrawals from, you know, like Novak Djokovic. If I'm going to go on the, whole, on the Andrew Rublev side of things and look over there, it also seems for me that up until at least the quarterfinals, clean sweep. Nishioko in the third round, Kachanov in the fourth round, most likely based on the rankings. Not really something to sort of be too afraid of for Andrew Rublev. Maybe the only side of things where I'm worried about is that he's played a lot of matches over the last few weeks. You know, obviously all of the matches in Monte Carlo, all of the matches in Banja Luka, now coming into Madrid. He might be a little bit fatigued. He, he already seemed fatigued in Monte Carlo. He already seemed fatigued in Banja Luka. So maybe in, in Madrid he'll be even more fatigued and maybe there won't be as much great tennis from him as we've seen in the last couple of weeks. But I'm still confident that he at least makes the quarterfinals, but I see him losing to Carlos Alcaraz there. And then if you look at the second quarter of the draw, so the bottom half of the top half, obviously, as I've mentioned before, Kasper Ruud's one of the big name players there, but he's just not found his form. I think I think so. I saw a tweet by someone saying, you know, it was a, it was a shock how he had an amazing week in Estoril, and then the next week and the week after he just didn't play as well anymore. And on clay, you know, if Casper's not finding his form on clay, it's going to be a very tough ask for him because obviously he has to defend a lot of points from, you know, the Roland Garros final. That's 1,200 points he's got to defend from Roland Garros final. And 
in this current form, he's definitely not reaching the Roland Garros final. He's a great player, but he hasn't. He's been playing a bit too passive recently, not really fighting too much for the ball. So I don't really see him having too much of you know a chance here in Madrid. Already in the third round, he's going to meet someone like you know Talon Griezmann, well, who obviously not a big name player, but on his day can beat you. You know he's he's a good player, got a really good forehand. In the fourth round, Lorenzo Mazzetti is an informed player as well. So he's definitely got some oppositions. And then if you talk to his run to the quarterfinals. That's when he meets Holger Rune, and personally, if Holger Rune, as long as Holger Rune's shoulder's healthy and fine, and he, you know he's, he's recovered fine from his uh, week in Munich, I think Holger Rune wins that match quite easily. To be honest, he, you know, he he did it. He, he did lose to him in Roland Garros last year, but this year I think he would he would get it done quite easily. Moving on to Holger Rune, Holger Rune had a bit of a tough ask in, in Munich in the final, to be honest, but he managed to come through, and it was great to see that he did so. He was clearly playing better in the first set against Botic van der Zandschorp. In the second set, completely destroyed, 6-1. And then in the third set, it seems to be have a sort of shoulder injury, and he just and then the ankle as well. And it all seemed to be falling apart for him, and he was down 5-2, two breaks down, to be honest. And somehow, somewhere, he managed to save four match points, get himself into a tie break, and Botic obviously served the match three times, but, you know, Rune eventually managed to win the tie break and win himself... The Munich Open defending his title from last year as well. If he is able to come into Madrid recovered from that sort of issue he had on the shoulder and the ankle, it didn't seem too likely that he was going to be playing at 100% coming into Madrid based on his post-match interview. If he's coming in healthy, he's going to have a great run and I think he makes at least the semi-finals where he will meet Carlos Alcaraz. If he isn't going to come in healthy... I still see him being able to make the quarterfinals where he will most likely meet, you know, Casper Ruud or Lorenzo Mazzetti. If he meets Mazzetti, to be honest, it could go either way. Mazzetti's been in great form. If he isn't 100%, if he's like 60%, 70%, Mazzetti has a chance. If he's 100%, he can beat both Mazzetti and Rude. Even if he is 60%, 70% right now, I still think he can beat Rude, no matter what. It's just... Rude's just not in form at the moment. So there you go. You've got my quarterfinals and the semifinals for the top half. We have Carlos Alcaraz against Andrei Rublev, Holger Rune most likely against Lorenzo Mazzetti, and then for the semifinal, it's going to be Carlos Alcaraz against Holger Rune. For the bottom half of the draw, it's much less stacked over here. There's only two players I really see having a chance on this side. Maybe three. You know, there's a. Uh, there's, I'd say Daniel Medvedev, Stefano Tsitsipas, and you know Felix Auger Aliassime. Let's start with Felix Auger Aliassime. You know he had to withdraw from uh, Monte Carlo, and he hasn't played any tournaments last week, trying to recover from his injury. And to be honest, the form you don't really know how it's going to be coming into the tournament. But here in Madrid, the conditions are different to most other clay tournaments. It's very high altitude, so the ball goes much faster through the courts, much flatter. So the big hitters usually have a good chance here. If, you know, his service, especially if his first serve's firing, Felix has a very good chance of going far here in Madrid. It's going to be tough because, you know, you look at the side where he might meet Stefano Tsitsipas in the quarterfinals, he might meet Daniel Medvedev in the semifinals. It's going to be a very tough ask him straight out the gates to come out and be firing on all cylinders. But, you know, we've seen him have some great runs of form before. It's just going to be whether he can find his rhythm. He hasn't played very, he hasn't played well at all, to be honest, the entire year so far. But... It only takes one week to really get yourself back into it, and maybe he can do it here in Madrid, but with the tough opposition like Daniel Medvedev and Stefano Tsitsipas, it might be tough. Moving on to Daniel Medvedev, obviously Clay's not really his thing, but here in Madrid, it might not be too bad for him, because he played. He did play well in Monte Carlo, he did beat Alexander Zverev along the way, and to be honest, obviously he lost the whole Garud in straight sets, but it was a good match nonetheless. It's better than what we expected from Medvedev on the clay, I would say. In the third round here in Madrid, in Madrid, he's most likely going to meet Jiri Lehechka, who is in great form. I think that's probably one of the toughest third round matches you can have here in Madrid so far. Daniel Medvedev against Jiri Lehechka. He might meet Andy Murray in the second round, to be quite honest, but you never know. Murray didn't have too much of a good time in Monte Carlo, so I'm not exactly sure how, he was gonna, how he's going to fare in Madrid. But he has had more success in Madrid in the past, so he could definitely put Medvedev through his paces, as we've seen him do You know, in Qatar. He definitely kept it tight against Medvedev. But if Medvedev has... An easy time against Murray. He meets Lehechka, which might be tight. If he manages to pass that test, Botic van der Zandschup seems to be next up. After that, in the quarterfinals, seems to be Taylor Fritz. And then Tsitsipas or Felix Ogelia seem in the semis. It's going to be tight. I think Medvedev will probably be out after the quarterfinals. I think if he's lucky enough to beat to get to the quarterfinals in the first place, beating the likes of, you know, Lehechka, Murray Lehechka or Van der Zandschulp. Meeting Taylor Fritz in his current form in the quarterfinals, 
I think it's going to be too much for him just because it's on clay. Already on their hard court matches, they're always extremely tight. And, you know, either player can really dominate the rallies and just really wear down the other opponent. But here on clay, Taylor Fritz seems to have found his form. And obviously in Monte Carlo, he reached the semis. And in, uh, in um, Munich, he reached the semis as well. But I think Medvedev doesn't really have a chance against Taylor Fritz in these conditions. So I think that's where his run realistically ends. Going on to the Tsitsipas side of things, he already has a very tough draw in terms of if this was back in 2020. If this was back in early 2020 or even, you know, 2018 or 18 or 17, meeting Dominic Team in a round two of the Masters 1000 wasn't something you would expect and it wasn't something you were hoping for. Here, he might meet him in round two. Dominic Team obviously is not the player he used to be. We really hope to see him getting him back to his best. But Tsitsipas in his current form, the fact that he made the final of Barcelona, unfortunately he lost it for him, but now he's loving 10 in the ATP 500 finals, shows that he's in good form. He has improved from his week in Monte Carlo, and now coming into Madrid, he'll be looking to go far and sort of get himself even more, you know, wins under his belt. It's a good tournament for him just because, you know, Madrid is for big hitters and Tsitsipas is a big hitter, to be honest. Big serve, big forehand, backhand needs a little bit of work, but... Other than that team match, if this if team was in his best form, that would be a tight thing. But other than that team match, he doesn't really have any big asks to get through until the quarterfinals, where he most likely meets Felix Ojeda Seam, and after the quarterfinals, he most likely meets Taylor Fritz, if not Daniel Medvedev, who manages to shock me. But you know, it's it's quite an easy draw up until about the quarterfinals for Stefano Tsitsipas. So yeah. There you have it. You've got my quarterfinals for the bottom half of the draw. We've got Daniel Medvedev against uh, Taylor Fritz. And then we've got Stefano Tsitsipas against Felix Ojeda Yassim. And then for the semifinals, we've got Stefano Tsitsipas against Taylor Fritz. So if we're looking at the semifinals, I predicted, obviously, Alcaraz against Holger Rune and Stefano Tsitsipas against Taylor Fritz. If I'm going for the Alcaraz against Holger Rune, if Holger Rune isn't able to play at 100%, like, I mean 100% of his best and not injured at all. I think Carlos Alcaraz has a very good chance of getting the win here. Obviously, the last match was uh, last year in Paris, where Alcaraz actually injured himself in that second set. In the first set, Holgerun played some amazing tennis and pushed Alcaraz off the court, to be quite honest. Second set was much tighter, but Alcaraz eventually tore his uh, abdominal muscle, I believe, if I remember correctly, and had to retire in the second set. Um, I think Alcaraz here in Madrid, defending champion, crowd behind him, obviously he's Spanish, he's going to have all the love and support from the crowd, I think it's going to give him a lot of motivation and I think he, he's going to rise up to the occasion and get the big win here, get his, uh, get his revenge for that loss in Paris uh, and I think he's going to get himself into the final. Obviously Holger Rune doesn't seem to be coming in at 100% after the Munich week and it's a shame to see, I would love to see them both playing each other 100%. But nonetheless, I see Alcaraz winning it. If it's if Rune's at one hundred percent, Alcaraz probably in free. If Rune is not at his absolute best, Alcaraz maybe might be able to get it done in two. Now, if we look at Stefano Tsitsipas against Taylor Fritz, obviously they met a couple of weeks ago in uh, in Monte Carlo, and it was a dominant win by Taylor Fritz. There, it was a shock to all, to be honest, uh, that how how dominant Taylor was in that match, and it was a great it was a great win for him great win for his confidence and it definitely boosted him as well even for his week in munich showing that you know i'm able to compete with the top guys who are very good on clay myself even though he's not you know a clay guy um here i think it's going to be a bit of a different story stefano Tsitsipas definitely will not want to lose back-to-back -back matches against taylor fritz before that obviously he's still got a winning record against taylor fritz They've always had tight matches, but before, you know, on clay, it, it, you know, Stefano Tsitsipas should be the better player. I think here in Madrid, Stefano Tsitsipas will try and put his foot down. He will have learnt, you would like to hope, from his mistakes in that match in Monte Carlo. And I think he'll be able to edge it through, but I see it being a free set. I don't see Tsitsipas winning this in straight sets after his absolute demolition by Taylor Fritz in Monte Carlo. But I see Tsitsipas getting himself into the final. And there you go. We've got my final prediction. We've got Carlos Alcaraz against Stefano Tsitsipas, a rematch of the Barcelona final. It's uh, it's going to be quite interesting. Obviously, Stefano Tsitsipas got very dominated in that final in Barcelona. Carlos Alcaraz was just everywhere, left, right, and center, dominating from start to finish. I don't see Stefano Tsitsipas being able to turn things around here, just being in Spain, Carlos Alcaraz having the atmosphere, and just the, the run that Carlos is expected to go on, I think, especially even with the French Open in sight. He seems to be on a roll, 
on top of his game, not dropped a set in his last four matches. He just wants to get things going and keep those points because he wants to get himself back to world number one. So I think this match would probably be another straight sets victory for Carlos Alcaraz as he defends his Madrid Open title and continues his quest to be world number one and get himself ready for Roland Garros.